Hello friends. Well, this video is a little different. Um, it's not so much inspiration that brings me here as opportunity. I've been scarce lately, so busy with visiting and with my friend and all the work that she's doing and helping me do in the house and so um, she's retired for the evening to her room and I thought I'd turn the camera on and see if anything would come through for my other life whatever um, the changes have been coming It's just been continuous. It's, it's warping the whole concept of time. I hope you're noticing it. I know it's not just me. Things that might have taken a good long while to develop historically uh, can now happen pretty darn fast. I think as we look at our youth, um, it normally took a good long while to grow and, and to be seasoned and to have a lot of experiences and to mature. And I think we might find them um, not doing things that way. Rather, perhaps accessing both higher self and their own records of however many lifetimes you know where they have been the matured seasoned one and so I love the um, consciousness that anything is possible because that leaves you empty and open and available to see whatever presents and not try to fit it into uh, an understanding that you already have into some kind of uh, matrix or structure that comes from the past and so we head off into who knows what our bright future yes but no doubt riddled with a certain amount of challenge and maybe some really intense challenge no doubt for some of us and we're all plugged into that you know I ponder and muse on that sometimes I don't believe in a hell but if there was a hell we're there too you know, we're in the heart of every atom and cell in, in the oneness. If there's only one, then there's no other. And so it doesn't matter what it is. We are that in the midst of this oneness. Heaven, hell, and everything in between, you know. On the earth, we have kind of a heaven, hell, and everything in between going on. We have manifestations of soaring spirituality and joy in the highest heights and we have hell as well and the in-between and no matter where we live and how isolated our outer circumstances might be from a lot of that um, for many of us the only way we even know that it exists is from the media or from reading but even so, we are one with that. And if any of you are acquainted with an empath amongst your circle of friends, uh, maybe you know a little bit about what it's like to be not always willingly plugged in to a depth of feeling that's, that's uncomfortable. Well, we are that. And we've had barriers and structures of belief um, crowding us 
and our space of being all around. And if you're ready and willing, those are going down now all over the place. You know, I call it excavating beliefs, but just being open to the reality that anything is possible, that's a good way. And then whenever you take in truth, wherever you find it, it will dredge up everything within that is anti that. And so there's more opportunity to take another look at things that have been believed in the past and maybe let them go, you know, maybe say, well, maybe that was true, but maybe it's not all that there is, you know. We're the ones that have boxed ourselves in. And so that gives us the freedom to take down the walls of the boxes. You know, let's have a bonfire. Let's let it all go. So where am I? Who am I is probably better, but you know, we'll go for where am I. I've been pondering on truth of late with a capital T and how just like light it's not a thing that nature is of 3D. What we have of truth and of light here is the resonance of that. This isn't the home of either of those. I don't even know what light is. I mean, there's so much that we think we know, but just like our concepts of astronomy and cosmology, they're likely all wrong. Um, I'll put a link here, and if I don't comment me, to Thunderbolts of the Gods which is a really excellent uh, documentary presentation on a new way of looking at cosmology and astronomy and uh, taking gravity out of center stage as that which keeps the planets and stars in their orbits and looking at uh, electricity and magnetism and some other forces that are <laughs> probably millions or billions of times stronger. And it's surprising as you watch this video, I think it's about an hour and a half, something like that, uh, it links up as well with the quote-unquote mythology from around the globe and the consistency of that. We look at it a lot of times, but we don't have a lot of really good or clear interpretations of why we see the same signs over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, there's ideas, but I don't know about you. A lot of times the explanations given just don't click for me. And so maybe you'll watch this and as we watch this or anything with the understanding that anything is possible, we're open to more. We can perceive more. We can receive more. When we're so full of ourselves and our own knowledge, thinking that we know the door is closed, you know, to me that's the red flag. Anytime I think I know something, that's the red flag. It's a warning. It's a danger. Uh, with no end of anything and no limits, um, maybe all we can know is a little bit. I don't know. I don't, I don't have words for a lot of things yet. such as truth. I know that it's pure. I know that it's 100% pure and 99.99% .99 pure isn't enough. And it's either truth or it's not. I know that there's this level of 
what I would call the absolute. But I don't have a pigeonhole for it. I don't have a, a place in my understanding, such as it is, of how things go together, where that fits in very neatly. Uh, even if we say there's, even if, and I'm not saying this, even if we were to say there are, let's say, an unlimited number of densities or dimensions, giving room for unlimited growth, expansion, and potential. Even so, where does a level that's absolute and that's perfect already fit into that? It doesn't fit very well, does it? Because that's still rather linear. It looks unlimited, but if you number things, that's pretty linear. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you know, it has an order and a structure and one builds on the other and so on and so on. So where's, where does the absolute fit into such a thing? Well, it doesn't seem to. So right now, I have a number of things that I know to be so that don't fit together. It's like they're pieces of puzzles, but they're not pieces of the same puzzle. And it's, it's enjoyable, you know. It really is. But I don't try to force the pieces to fit. I find that rather arrogant. I'd rather be sensitive and attuned. Higher dimensional beings are there. I mean, in addition to our own interior guidance, which is always on and functional 24-7, 365, whatever, you know in heart the still small voice is always there and even in the silence understanding is available this is internal uh, and I mean you know you could say this is a way to contact source or God so you you, you have access via what seems to be a limited dimension 3D to that which is unlimited. Where am I going with this? It's kind of lost my train. It's tooting off into the distance. Bye train! <laughs> so, even so, there are truly benevolent beings, light beings, that gather round. Um, I think we're on the main station for the Milky Way Galaxies television. Everyone's wanting to watch what's going on in this solar system and with the Earth. And so there's, there's a, a great gathering here to watch and to participate in what's going on. And so I didn't want helpers for a good long while or what seemed like a good long while because I got tired because I don't know why because I had gotten tired of uh, the fact that there are imposters you know trying to carry themselves off and and put themselves forward as beings of light and, and uh, I just you know I wasn't pleased to find uh, that I wasn't always clear in distinguishing these guys and so I, I turned it all off for a while. I felt like I needed to plug into my own divinity. Now I still feel this way. We don't need anything else. 
we are well and truly self-sufficient, each and every one of us. And we have ultimate and divine guidance and direction available within. And so you can rest in that. It's a, it's a fine-tuning, I guess, so that we can kind of like tune in the station <laughs> and uh, be sure to pick it up. That would be the heart station, of course. But there are these other beings. And I think we're going to be participating. They're going to be participating with us more and more as we go forward. If, indeed, as Alex Collier has said, as the Andromedans have suggested, maybe the Pleiadians too, it's, it's almost as if 3D is imploding. The, the d dimensions, densities are merging and we're finding ourselves that the frequency the frequency the vibration is rising witness the Schumann resonance being no longer seven point whatever it was so higher frequencies are becoming the norm for those who want that and who are ready to take that train you know there are going to be other destinations available but for the light beings, you know, if ascending the spiral of light is your desire, then that's what you've got going on, just like me. And so I think we will find ourselves participating with helpers that right now, at least consciously, we know not of. And so experience broadens, consciousness broadens. Um, my friend used a good analogy last night in discussing um, the who am I is the central question that really helps to raise consciousness and, and help us find our center. And it's not here in 3D nor even in 4D. And we really are more the space in which things happen. But we're so used to being stuffed into the body consciousness, into thinking we're that, we're the form. Uh, we have been so marshaled and trained into that that it's quite the habit so that even though you know I am not that, um, if you've spent any time, read anything about people who have NDEs, they're standing outside the body. The body is literally dead, you know, flatline. There's enough of them that have been attached to the machinery to totally report, you know, no heartbeat, no brain waves, no breath, no nothing. And yet the being standing or outside the form or hovering above is well able to sense and to think and to uh, be aware. And so you're not limited to the form or to the mind, to the brain. You're still whole and complete absent that. It's just that you can't get those around you to perceive you absent the 3D equipment, the body and the mind. So in that way they're very useful but not necessary. And so even though you know, hey, I'm not that, even though you, maybe you astral travel or you've had an OBE or whatever and you know, even so, we have layers and levels of the programming that still cling. And the tendency to identify with the form. And so, We're not the form. Look at a fish in the water, in the ocean. The reality is that you contain your body. Your body doesn't contain you. And a lot of us on the spiritual path got into thinking, oh, I am the spirit that inhabits the body. And we went along like that for a good long while. But 
you are the water and you contain the fish or you are the fish and you're swimming in the water. And Nelia Benz has uh, on her blog online, ascension101.com, she has a, a, a good one for this, you know, where she says it's, it's not correct, it's not accurate to think that you leave the body in an, in an OVE or something like that. Um, she says the reality is you contain the body. Now, she's not the first to say this, you know, Eckhart Tolle is fond of saying, I am the space, or can I be the space for this? And so, what happens, at least what's happening in my world, is the expansion of consciousness more and more. I've had a lot of experiences where I've, I've expanded and I've, I've been out in among and with the solar system and the galaxy and, and the universe and all of that. Um, but what about right here in the room? I mean, that's a meditation. What about everyday consciousness? What about transcending body identification in everyday consciousness? And being aware that there's a car going down the road there's a body behind the wheel of the car, driving the car, and being aware that I contain all of that and the road and everything else, I contain the destination. Uh, it's just a new perspective, and it's a nice one. It's an expansive one. I'm finding more and more, almost as if spirit is being given wings to truly fly and expand up and out and leave old ways, old boxes and cages of thought behind. You know, it's thought that entraps us. Let's spend as little time as possible in the mind. Is that all? I think so. Good day.